Krishna, that was a beautiful tune. Thank you. Magic. We're, uh, while we're in your home here, uh, why don't you comment and then your mom also on this verse, which I hope, this is the one I looked at, 
I hope we're on the fourth verse, second chapter, first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. This is uh, such a significant verse that we chant it every morning in every one of the 800 Hare Krishna temples worldwide before the morning Bhagavatam class. So it's a very special verse. And uh, also, um, anybody else, please just, if you're inspired, some realization or insight comes to you and you want to add to what Krishna or Amrita Sundar is saying, you can uh, jump in during a gap too. And that's not to say that um, they, 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 they should stop talking, but it, they're, they're just getting some input from you, which may then further inspire them to say something even more deep and meaningful, okay? We've kind of had this more um, free flowing format last few weeks, and I, I think it's, it's worked very well. If any word could be used to describe it's more organic. So feel free to add your comments as well and contribute. So what do you, what can you share with us in this regard, Krishna and Amrita? Okay, so it starts um, with before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest. So um, just from the beginning of the verse, uh, Prabhupada is, and the Bhagavatam and Prabhupada elaborates in the purport in that one con, uh, that one sentence is very powerful actually which is the very means of conquest, which means like understanding Bhagavatam, which in turn makes us understand uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is our very means of conquest. And before we begin on that quest, that conquest, uh, we have to reestablish our connection with God. Uh, Prabhupada also says something like that in the purport of um, reestablishing our connection with God before we begin to uh, read Bhagavatam and learn more about him. And so we should offer respectful obeisances unto the Personality of Godhead, Narayana, and unto all these other great personalities and unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, so we can learn more about uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and unto Srila Vyasadev, the author. So that's my comments. Prabhuji, I'm muted. Sorry, Prabhuji, you're muted. Yeah, it reminds me of Keshav Kashmiri, who spoke just like the wind, being blessed by Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Of course, it may also have to do with your going needing to get to your school Zoom call as quickly as possible, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so let's hear from Amrita Sundari and then let's get the other youngster in our group here, Ishan, to follow up or, or even jump in or join. Um, so do you want me to recite the words and the purpose for everything? Uh, yes, yes, we should start with that. Mm -hmm. Narayanam namaskritya naram chaiva narotamam jivim sarasvatim vyasam tato jayamudirai. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Narayana, unto Narnara and Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Shira Vyasadeva, the author. Transition for by Shira Prabhupada. Shira Prabhupada. All the Vedic literatures and Puranas are meant for conquering the darkest region of material existence. The living being is in the state of forgetfulness of his relation with God due to his being overly attracted to material sense gratification from time immemorial. His struggle for existence in the material world is perpetual and it is not possible for him to get out of it by making plans. If he at all wants to conquer this perpetual struggle for existence, he must reestablish his eternal relationship with God. And one who wants to adopt such remedial measures must take shelter of literature such as the Vedas and the Puranas. <laughs> Foolish people say that the Puranas have no connection with the Vedas. However, the Puranas are supplementary explanations of the Vedas intended for different types of men. All men are not equal. There are men who are conducted by the mode of goodness, others who are under the mode of passion, and others who are under the mode of ignorance. The Puranas are so divided that any class of men can take advantage of them and gradually regain their lost position and get out of the hard struggle for existence. Srila Sutta Goswami says the way of chanting the Puranas. This may be followed by persons who aspire to be preachers of the Vedic literatures and the Puranas. Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Purana, and it is especially meant for those who desire to get out of the material entanglement permanently. Um, 
I have, uh, like in the beginning, I used to have this question. Um, okay, we understand the Supreme Lord Narayana. And then what about Nar Narayan Rishi? Why are we especially invoking their blessings? And of course, we understand Mother God, Saraswati is the goddess of learning. And Srila Vyasdev is the author of Shriman Bhagavatam. And it was um, narrated by Shukdev Goswami, adding his own personal realizations. And uh, I did some research and I found out two reasons why we invoke the blessings of Narnara and Rishi. And, but um, it was long back and I forgot the second reason. I have it somewhere. Um, but the first reason that I, I came across was uh, Krishna's incarnation is Narnara and Rishi. In that incarnation, when Indra tried to disturb him by sending so many apsaras, and <laughs> Narnara and Rishi, he produced like millions of more beautiful apsaras than what Indra presented to distract him from his meditation. And so we um, seek the blessings of Narnara and Rishi to help us get rid of lust in our heart, lust for any kind of sense gratification, whether gross or subtle. And there was another reason that I found out, but I forgot, it's somewhere in my notes. But the, the central point is we are so much indebted to the sages, to the Lord, to goddess of Saraswati. Otherwise, on our own, uh, you know, the cycle, as we're uh, in the Prashwata Math, we had been reading the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, how this material world is like a banyan tree. And everywhere the branches of the banyan tree touches the ground, there's another tree. We have been here so long producing so many karmic reactions that there's no way to get out of it. At the most, we can move to the higher planets, and but because of our attachment to matter and to enjoyment, again, we'll come down. So there is actually no way to get out without receiving help from the devotees of the Lord and with, without receiving the knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam. And of all the Puranas and of all the Vedas, Srimad Bhagavatam very emphatically leaves you with no doubt that without surrendering to the lotus feet of Krishna, there is any other way of purifying yourself completely of matter. So we are very, very grateful to Srila Prabhupada for bringing Srimad Bhagavatam to the Western world and um, bringing the English translation. I'm sure even if I read the Hindi translation, I wouldn't get much out of it. My vocabulary is so limited. So I'm so, so grateful to Srila Prabhupada for producing it in English so we could understand and speak Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhuji, I'm muted. Prabhupada uses one phrase when he tells the story of Indra trying to tempt Nara and Narayan by sending a whole bunch of apsaras. And then Nara and Narayan counteracted that by creating even more beautiful ladies in response. So the term Prabhupada used in that case to describe that incident is that a confectioner is not attracted by sweets. <laughs> confectioner, he, he produces sweets all day long. <laughs> and, and then he's not attracted. He produces so many sweets. You can't, you, you could tempt just about anybody else in the world, 99.1%. You offer them a sweet and uh, eventually they're going to succumb to it. You know, Paki gave me some Jagannath Prashadam this morning. I was ready to leave. She said, oh, wait, 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 just five minutes. So she made up some nice uh, poha with some nuts and everything. And then she added a little bag of Jagannath sweets. When I, I was saying, no, I don't eat breakfast. You know, I have to go, I have to go, I have to go. But then as I was driving back to Spanish Fort, this Ziploc bag of Jagannath sweets was calling to me, eat me, honor me. So, and I actually didn't know it was sweet. I thought it was a savory, but I ate one and tasted the nice sweet juiciness of it. And then I ate another. And they didn't make it back to Spanish Fort. So, but it, but the sweet maker himself is not a, is not attracted by the sweet. So, Nara and Ryan produce everything. It's beautiful. Everything is opulent. Everything is magnificent and splendorous. So you you can you can tempt everyone else. Devi Everybody else is captivated by Krishna's uh, external energy, but but Krishna is not attracted at all by the external energy in the same way that Nara and Ryan weren't attracted by bevies and bevies of beautiful girls. So what do you have to say to all this, Ishan Prabhu? Um, <clears throat> I think I'm 
We are not about you are muted bro. Sorry. Hare Krishna. Hare so, Krishna. Um my kind of understanding from this is that when it says that like they're meant for different types the Vedas and Puranas are meant for different types of people but there's a very strong connection between both of them or um all these literatures i think it's very important that at the end when it says that um the shrimad bhagavatam is meant for people who want to get out of this material entanglement permanently i think it's kind of establishing this kind of tier list of you know this is for like this um type of person who's reached a certain level so if you're starting out you just want some you know you read some, some you read some different puranas to get over your material problems but then you kind of build your way up and at one point you are at the shrimad bhagavatam where you just want to get rid of all of these problems permanently and i think that's uh very important in this purport so what about uh it it does caution you in the second verse dharma projito kaitavo tana matsaram it warns you right in the beginning the second verse that this is completely pure prana and it has nothing to do with material acquisition and so it's almost like telling you if you're not if you're not interested in liberation then don't go any further but at the same time if later on we find akama sarvakama mokshakara idariti it doesn't matter if you're full of lusty desires or if you're desirous of liberation or if you're a liberated soul. So um, do you think that the, the second verse could, would stop people from going on? Whereas actually the, another um, aspect of the Bhagavatam is it, it says you can, eat, you can bring your material desires, that's okay, but the Bhagavatam will satisfy them. I don't necessarily think that those two things are contradictory. Um, I think that it's possible for you to, like, it, I don't think that it's more of a warning. I think it's more of like, this is what you're about to get. So even if you have your, like, own desires, because everyone has their own desires. So I think it's that this won't necessarily satisfy those desires um, immediately, but in the long run, it would pretty much just kind of, like, subdue them. So I don't think it's more, like, I don't think it's necessarily a warning as much as it's a like, congratulations, this is what you're gonna get now. So. Excellent, really good answer, really good. Prabhupada uh, once said, or it, maybe it's in one of his reports that um, when, when you perform devotional service, if you, have a, if you have a desire to enjoy on the level of the heavenly planets, uh, generally uh, rather than going there, rather than taking birth there and having to spend so many hundreds of thousands of years sort of detoured. He says devotees can uh, experience it in their dreams. They can experience heavenly delights in their dreams and that way get it out of their system in this life so that they can still be eligible to go back to home, back to God at the end of this particular life. Any other thoughts, Kapilji or anybody? Isan again? Um, I would yeah. Uh, okay, so um, hi Krishna. Uh, I would like to add to Amrita Sunday um, The I think the second point, uh, I was just reading um, Shah Darshani uh, by Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur. He says, um, because uh, Vyasadev wrote um, uh, this uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and Badri Kashram and uh, doing any anything, doing, uh, I mean, any big Vedic um, step that's taken, you have to like pay obeisances to the presiding deity. Um, so the Adhishta Devatas. So I think that's why um, the Naranara and Rishis are paid obeisances in this verse. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So well, you are on mute. So you're saying that because Narayan Narayan Rishi is worshipped there in Badrinath, mm -hmm. that's an important reason why Vyasadeva pays respects to him. Very down-to-earth reason. Very direct <laughs> down-to-earth reason. <laughs> very, very well summarized by Krishnam, Mataji's, and uh, Ishan. The one thing that I liked uh, or that caught my attention is the last uh, sentence of the purport where it says, uh, 
Shrimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Purana and it is specially meant for those who desire to get out of the material entanglement permanently. Uh, in the purport when Prabhupada was uh, mentioning about the nature, I think there are a lot of uh, impediments, there are a lot of characteristics that help us make progress. To name a few, uh, it could be the blessings of Guru, blessings uh, of the senior devotees, of your parents, your own endeavor uh, to make a progress on this path, eventually the mercy of the Lord. But there's often one more aspect that is undermined or not given that much importance is your own nature. And Prabhupada make a mention of the nature, uh, the Satogun, Tamogun and Rajogun that uh, I was reading uh, the third chapter of uh, Bhagavad Gita and it was very nicely explained uh, that prominently uh, when we look at animals, the dominant nature is uh, uh, the mode of uh, ignorance. And then for human beings, it is uh, the mode of passion. And then finally, for the devatas, it is uh, the, the mode of uh, uh, sattvagun. Uh, and it was says that, see, this is not to stereotype, but it says that the prominent nature among these three categories is this. Yes, you do have uh, tigers and lions that will always be in the mode of passion and you have cows that could be in the, in the mode of uh, uh, the sattvaguna. Whereas the same thing goes for the, for the human beings. But then it was very nicely explained that how often we undermine this consciousness that is given to us. And Prabhuji, to answer your question, I think the same uh, uh, lecture it was mentioned that uh, any desires that are independent of uh, the desires of Lord is the sure shot path to take you to bewilderment and to sufferings. So as Prabhupada started, and we also read in the translation that this is a sure shot path to conquer. But what you need is definitely the mercy, your own endeavor, but also that how you deal with your own nature that transitions throughout the day. Like you also transition from the Sattva Gun to Tamo to Rajo, but more you read, more you develop this understanding and I think you stay in the association of others who can inspire you and take you to the next level. I think that thing is also important. Wow, that's a good analysis, the modes of material nature. Xian, do you have any insights here, my man? <laughs> uh, no, Prabhuji. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so uh, the conquest, uh, is it true to say then that the conquest which is referred to here as um, in large part to conquer over the influence of the modes of material nature. Is that what it's saying? And if you do transcend the modes of material nature, then do you also conquer over birth, death, disease, and old age? Well, I think my understanding is first knowing uh, your prominent nature and then try to read and develop this understanding that can help you transition from one mode to other and eventually to the, to the mode of goodness uh, where you can help develop a deep understanding. And that's the reason you are begging for that mercy. Every time when you start a class or a discussion, you say that well, I, I want uh, the blessings of uh, Mother Saraswati, Narnayan Rishi and eventually the mercy of Lord so that I can make, even though I take a baby step, I just want to make progress. And I know that the biggest impediment for me is my own nature. But it can also be an asset too. Uh, Arjuna uh, is maybe, maybe a good example of what you're saying is that Arjuna uh, fantasized about being a Brahmin, leaving the Kurukshetra war and being, uh, taking up the, the mood of, mode of goodness as a Brahmin in the forest. But Krishna says, uh, I think it's, uh, Krishna says, you can, you can go and walk away from the battlefield and set yourself up in a nice, peaceful forest ashram. But uh, even, even there, you know, somebody is going to come and say, somebody stole my cows or somebody did this and that. And then you're going to get, you're going to, you're going to lapse into your mode of passion, your chatra mood. 
and help them out. So you, you can't, uh, on the one hand, we want to transcend the modes of material nature, but on the other hand, um, we have to work with what we have and dedicate it to Krishna so in order to do that. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. And that's a very nice point that uh, it reminded me of a, a discussion that I had uh, a couple of days back where the same example was used, the Arjuna's example, I think in the, sec the later part of the second chapter, beginning of the third chapter, uh, when there is a transition between buddhi yoga and karma yoga. And uh, the, the example that was given in that discussion was the premature renunciation. Most often people feel that if we, I need to make a progress, I need to leave all the attachment and overnight transcend to this uh, uh, one who, like the devotee that uh, who can only focus on God's wishes and but it says that that piece is premature because you may leave uh, your spouse and go to uh, a secluded place, but you may have six other spouses that are associating with you. Those are your five senses and your mind. And unless you control that, then you can see the results. So, so thank you so much for sharing that. I think Ishan is, is uh, bursting to say something here. He has that look about him. <laughs> no, Vijay, I am good. <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting because the very verse, Akama, Sarvakama, Moksha Karam, the verse that says, uh, don't worry, you can bring your impurities or, or your, you can, in this case, you can bring whatever mode of nature you're in to devotional service. You can bring that to the table. That verse uh, is, talks about Dhruva Maharaj. And it's interesting that uh, after he saw Narayan, he was still a Kshatriya. He didn't, he didn't uh, go to the forest. He didn't adopt any different occupation. He kept on being a Kshatriya, but uh, his uh, performance of his duty was no longer driven by the mode of passion. It was driven by a desire to please the Lord according to the talents and abilities that the Lord gave him. So I think what, what you're point is making is very valid that um, stay where you are. Jnana Prayashama Dipasya, uh, one of Lord Chaitanya's disciples, a householder came up to him and said, you know, now that I've become a devotion, devotee, should I take sannyas and go and preach? And Lord Chaitanya said, absolutely not. You know, just stay where you are, uh, practice devotional service and give up your preconceptions. Give, don't, don't be uh, driven by the modes of material nature, um, but but that's not to say you give up your 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 dharma. Just do do it uh, for the satisfaction of Krishna, which is ultimate dharma. Savai pum sam paro dharma. The highest dharma of a living being is to serve Krishna. So our 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 our, our physical dharma, our temporary dharma, is, is householder sannyasi student, uh, retired person, but uh, shrad, the highest dharma, paro dharma, that's ultimately to serve Krishna. But serving Krishna doesn't mean you give up what you're doing, you just purify it. Is that right? Am I right or wrong, everybody out there? The boys so much objected to what I said, they walked out of the room. No. <laughs> they want to they they want to switch places. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody has anything to add or to attract, just jump in now. Kruti, you have something more? Your insights are. Uh, well, I, it's a nice point. I think Krishna also mentions in the Bhagavad Gita that your own nature will help you uh, transcend these. Uh, modes. Uh, so we see the same, like so many uh, devotees in us conduct preachers, there are people who manage. So, and also it's not that we are just one particular mode of nature, there's mixture. And uh, that was a very nice point, Prabhu. And Krishna also states that, that uh, doing our own prescribed duties, but dotailing them to Krishna slowly will um, um, get us out of the material trap we are in. Yeah. One verse comes to mind. I'm not sure that Nahi Kastyad Sanamapi Jatutishati 
Kare Tehi Abhishakarma Sarva Prakritir Jarguna. Yes. What is that translation of that verse? Oh, I have it. Uh, it's in the third chapter. Third chapter, yeah. Yeah. Nahi Kastyad Sanamapi Jatuti Stadia Kam. Kare Tehi Abhishakarma Sarva Prakritir Jarguna. I guess that's uh, that no one can even uh, be a refrain from acting for even a one moment. Everyone is acting according to the uh, work born from his nature. Yeah. It's about third point uh, five. Everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the modes of material nature. Therefore, no one can reframe from doing something not even for a moment. So devotional service is for, first, and, first and foremost activity. It's not the cessation of activity. It's never that, but it's dovetailing, right? Activity in the service of the Lord. Right, Onkar? <laughs> yes. <laughs> After all, if you if you act against your nature, that's uh, that's not pleasing to the Lord because He He created your nature. He he, he endowed you with certain abilities, and he intends for you to use those in his service. Just like Kruti mentioned, you know, our worldwide International Society for Krishna Consciousness, uh, there, everything is required, you name it, art, uh, music, cooking, auto mechanics, bookkeeping, um, architecture, construction, farming, shopping at sam's club <laughs> everything everything is everything is required so if, if we all just want to be all just we all have some stereotypical idea of what it is to be a devotee and we all want to do that one thing <laughs> nothing nothing works so um yes anybody jumping in here so I, I would like to share one more thing in this context that uh, I was recently reading the chapter where Daksha is performing his Yadnya and uh, in the third, in the fourth canto and where Lord Vishnu appears there. And Lord Vishnu says to, then everybody offers him praises and then Lord Vishnu says that uh, to Daksha that uh, the exact sentence is, uh, I'll just read that. He says that one who is not in proper knowledge thinks that demigods like Brahma and Shiva are independent, or he even thinks that the living entities are independent. So I, I got to know that uh, in the eyes of Lord Vishnu, the, the limit of being is, is like thinking that living entities are independent. So it, like that's how uh, uh, Lord thinks that that's uh, not good to think about. So I thought how can then we think that we are independent uh, living in this material world? So we are bound by some uh, forces beyond ourselves. It's a uh, story. He says, Loka Sapadi Yashame Shanti Vibhish Dvija Iva Sichibada Sakalaya Karanam. It says like birds caught in a net. He's talking about the Loka Pals, the powerful uh, presiders of the different planets. Every planet has a presiding deity like Bhumi. It's the presiding deity. It says they they work according to the will of the Lord, just like birds are caught in a net. They don't have, they have, they have the freedom to to serve the Lord, but that's but 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 not the freedom to be quote unquote independent. Mm. Because independence <laughs> independence means to be separate from the most powerful force in the universe. Independence means separate from real knowledge, from real wisdom, means separate from real abundance, from real prosperity. So why, why would you, if, you're, if your father was Bill Gates, why in the world would you want to be independent, <laughs> for instance? You'd want to be as dependent as possible because then that opens up far more possibilities than being independent. Yeah. I was a part of a discussion uh, somewhere last week and there was someone asked that in uh, uh, your movement, why there are so many rules and regulations at every single point and they don't seem to be 
uh, reduce it they just seem to be increasing a lot year after each uh, year after year and uh, the prabhu ji who was speaking he gave a very nice answer that all the rules and regulations uh, in sanatan dharma are not meant to bound people but they are meant to make people free by following all these things uh, they will become free and they will not become more bound so i really like that uh, yeah, his answer man imagine if you're on a cruise ship and you're going from say camden new jersey to the caribbean or hawaii now as soon as you set foot on the cruise ship you can't you can't do everything you want you can't you 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 know you you have to you, you know you, if if you step over the if you go overboard you'll you'll die you'll drown so your your freedom is limited as soon as you step onto the cruise ship but on the cruise ship there's food there's buffet there's entertainment there's swimming pools there's volleyball courts there's uh 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 everything you could want you know and the best part of it is even even if all those comforts work there the the best part is that the cruise ship is taking you from Camden New Jersey to St. Thomas so so you 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 trade a few freedoms in order to go to a much better place uh tell me any tell me any any gain which which does not involve some trade off and so to get to the to get into iskon um which is like the cruise ship taking you to the spiritual world all you're asked to give up are the things that cause misery anyway illicit sex gambling intoxication and meat eating you know every every even mundane authority tells you that these things are injurious to your health and well-being so all you're asked to do is give up illicit sex meeting and gambling intoxication so someone says well if i give up all those how will i live well iskon it's iskon is like the cruise ship you know it's got it's got it doesn't have bars it doesn't have brothels it doesn't have slaughter houses it doesn't have butcher shops but it has it has wonderful food buffets you know hundreds of thousands of varieties of food it it doesn't have a dancing club but there's kirtan there's dancing there going on there there's um good association you don't get to hang around with the uh the hell's angels or the or the white supremacists unfortunately but you get to hang around with the pure hearted devotees of the lord so that so that the 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 what prophet is offering us is um the best on whatever level you want to look at it we're going to the best place where life is eternal full of bliss and knowledge and even even the 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 way of life that we adopt in order to get there even though we're giving up certain things uh, we're even getting so much more better high quality association food recreation even in the here and now is that what you're saying Uh, adding to the uh, point that omkar mentioned that following the rules will uh, give us higher levels of freedom or regulations is the simple example that we also face in the material world uh, since we are not around um, stealing or cheating people we are not in the prison houses um, uh, instead we are outside we relatively we are free citizens uh, that way so um the things that we think that these are regulations these are rules that are going to bind us more is actually not true and when the main uh problem with being in the prison house is that there's no opportunities available the the government um ha, it the government has people working to create opportunities they have work they have um uh, seed money they have grants they have all kinds of departments to stimulate business to so you can start a business and you can be successful with the help of the government so uh the best part about being outside of the prison house is there are all kinds of opportunities of course all the government's interest in is ec- economy but any anyway it's just an analogy and when you're in the prison house you have no opportunity whatsoever you know it's completely s- shut off from you and so in devotional service there is the opportunity to use your talents in this world 
in such a way as to uh, pursue what you love and satisfy the Lord and feel a deep inner satisfaction, and then continue to do that without any limitations of birth, death, disease, and old age uh, in the kingdom of God after the demise of this present body. Who hasn't said anything yet? Sundari Priya Mataji and Vijay Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanva Pranama, glory to Shri Prabhupada, glory to assembled devotees. So a uh, couple of things that pop up here, as we did the last week's theme, we have to really, when, when we are approaching uh, any, forgive our Bhagavatam, even, even when we go to a court, the judges, when they make their case, they, they tell uh, the, the lawyers, they make the case and they tell the judge, my Lord. So they're actually giving the, the weightage. I, I hope George uh, Govinde Prabhu was here. He would weigh how much respect, how much love uh, they ga gain. Then only they can present their case, even though if it's a contradicting case. In the similar way, if Bhagavatam is a Purana, it's, it's like it's non different than the Lord. How much obeisance we, we need to do? You know, uh, there in the, in the court of law, they're saving a prisoner. Or, or somebody, one person is definitely guilty and still they're making a case. Well, so we are completely guilty. We're, we're offending the Lord. How much, how much uh, mercy do we need of these saintly people? So uh, that is the mood that we start Bhagavatam with, that I don't know anything. I, I want to surrender and I, I, I rely only on the mercy of the sages uh, and the acharyas that, that can open my eye. Also, uh, Prabhupada gives a very hopeful uh, line in this purport about uh, that the Puranas actually, they gradually regain our uh, lost position. So, and we can get out of our struggle for existence. So just like in the prison house, like yesterday Prabhuji's class, you know, we, we all are in the prison house of material existence. And the only hope is we have to behave. We have to follow the rules and the ones who don't have no chance. They have to come back again and again. Those who follow the rules, there you will be recommended. And then, then the jailer will say, okay, fine. This person should be recommended. Otherwise we have no chance, you know, just like Maharaj explains, uh, that the raindrop, the water is pure, but it, because it comes down and contaminates with the dirt, it becomes impure and then it has to go through a huge process of purification. That same thing with us, you know, we, we, have, uh, we have so much existence in this millions of birth. I've exist, you know, contaminated myself so much that uh, unless I follow the rules and regulations and, and take the authority as the ultimate, uh, you know, source for my purification, I won't have any chance. So that's my limited understanding, Guruji. It's kind of like, it reminds me of our current situation with the pandemic and the lockdown. Mm -hmm. people, people want to, you know, they don't wear masks because they say it's infringing on their individual freedom. Mm -hmm. But then because they don't wear masks, the pandemic continues to rage on. England, uh, which is where our, by Bobby's sister and uh, her, what do they call it? Her brother-in-law live, it just went into another lockdown. Uh, and her, her brother-in-law, Len, who's a really cool guy, um, very fit, very fit guy, ran a lot of marathons, uh, continued to work up until the time he got a stroke last week. He was in his 80s, and he was continuing to work as a brickies laborer. He, at one point when he was in his 60s, he took Thai boxing, a really, really cool guy, uh, uh, he had a stroke last week and, uh, and he went in the hospital and his family can't even visit him because all of England's in a big lockdown. So there's a certain type of people, they don't want to give up. They don't want to wear a mask because they say it restricts their freedom. But then when, when they don't wear a mask, uh, they, they either get COVID. Some, someone said, if you don't like wearing a mask, you really won't like being on a ventilator. <laughs> so... The, these people are much more at risk for getting COVID, which could destroy their health or kill them. And perhaps the saddest part of it is that we all have to suffer because of their 
foolishness. You know, if, if everybody wore a mask, we'd probably be over it by now. But because, you know, 10% of the people refuse to wear masks, it's not only going on, but it's getting worse and worse and worse. So I just want to say also that the governor is going to come out tomorrow with some new restrictions. But if you recognize that all this has been necessitated by the 10% or 20% of people that refuse to wear masks, then I don't, I don't feel like they should tyrannize us. I don't feel like they should take away our rights to worship and to assemble. And so my feeling is that no matter what the government governor says tomorrow about limiting mass gatherings, that we're not gonna stop again and have to start all over again but we'll continue with our festivals and our Sunday programs, but we'll do it the way that it's supposed to be done. We'll social distance, we'll wear masks. And factually speaking, we haven't seen people getting sick because of it. Um, and, and so I, I just wanted to mention that and throw that in as something that kind of pertains to the situation in general and our situation in Salt Lake City. The fact is that in this material world, to get something, you have to give up something. And when Prabhupada, our spiritual guide and father, asks us to give up illicit sex, gambling, intoxication, and meat eating, it's, it's not to take stuff away from us, but it's to get us to someplace much, much better. Uh, uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. Uh, uh, Charudas Prabhu, please accept my obeisance as all glory. Please accept my Look uh, us, look uh, us in the screen. Look us, look please. us in the eye, and tell yes. us what and tell us what realizations you've had as a result of listening to our discussion thus far. Yes, uh, uh, my contribution is related to what Onkar Prabhu said. Excellent. Yes, he said that rules and regulations are meant for freeing us to give us freedom. And uh, what I want to know from Onkar Prabhu, if I may ask, is what, what would uh, you say, Onkar Prabhu, to a person who would say to you the following? OK, uh, the process of Krishna consciousness gives me a freedom. But what kind of freedom? Uh, uh, do I get from uh, following the rules and regulations? Um, <clears throat> after following the rules and regulations, I will find myself being in love with a God who doesn't allow me to also be God. <laughs> uh, I need, uh, uh, unless I accept the, the mood of, of servitude, the, the mood of being a servant of, of, of Lord Krishna, there's no, there's no uh, alternative uh, for me. So what about if I want to be also God? What kind of freedom is this? Ankar Prabhu. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe, maybe the question is too challenging, but I need to ask. No, no. Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances. I would like to re uh, really uh, uh, try to share my understanding, but I would request all the senior devotees to please correct me if I am wrong. So the first question you asked that, uh, uh, how, how what freedom can we get uh, uh, by following rules and regulations? So uh, scriptures tell us that this world is a, a place of misery at every single step, as it is it's said by the text, uh, Padam, Padam, Vipadam. So even we can uh, realize this in our day-to-day -day life, just for uh, living, we need to struggle a lot. Uh, and uh, I, I observe that a lot of people around me uh, get uh, disturbed and frustrated by small, small things. If uh, something happens to them, if the if they uh, if someone say if the signal they, if they miss the signal or if they miss the bus or even any small thing. Uh, they don't have range, the weather is not good. Small, they, they can get disturbed a lot and they become angry over others and it's just uh, giving punishment to oneself. And I observe that uh, these things uh, doesn't uh, bother me uh, much. Like if uh, something is wrong, if the 
whether it's not good and I, I i can it it just feel me what 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 different does it makes is anyway is the material world nothing is expected to go in line here so even now in the election period maybe half of the population may be uh, not happy because their candidate didn't come through so if uh, i if i am i'm practicing the spiritual practices then i am able to differentiate myself from all this i am able to identify myself different from all of this so whatever going around me doesn't uh, necessarily bother me so that's my understanding that uh, th- this this practices have made me free from the sufferings and uh, from the normal sufferings i may have still the four main sufferings on my uh, board but i hope that with practices i can get over through them as well and to a second question that uh, uh the what, how 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 shall i practice it the process that doesn't uh, make me the god so shila prop someone asked shila prop was also this question and shila prop was said uh being god is not a very great thing the great thing is uh, being above than god and with this process we are offering with the process of being more than god and that is being a devotee of god and being a devotee of god is much more greater than being the god so because uh, and a devotee has more powers in terms of he can just uh, tell even in, we can see in the krishna's past times that krishna is uh, being the supreme god the maintainer of all the universe he is still uh, dancing in front of his devotees so i i don't know of any other process which makes one person so powerful uh, than the god so i wow. think like... what an amazing answer onkar wow <laughs> i'm impressed thank you thank you onkar prabhu vote? thank you very much Uh, I can I I my response isn't anywhere near on the high level of onkar but what comes to my mind is the Jim Carrey movie what was it called where he got the chance to be god for a while what was the name of that does anybody know uh, oh my god i don't remember <laughs> i saw the movie <laughs> i saw the been, movie it could have been titled oh my god but he he got to be god and then uh the first thing that after he was given the title of god then the then the next time he opened up his computer opened up his email there were like millions and millions of requests everybody wanted <laughs> to ask him this and that so and he he's a one finger typer so he's trying to answer all these different requests you know and he's like he's like going crazy you know cuz he's just not he's just you know he's not suited for the role and then finally he discovers one key on his computer that if he just taps this one key it answers every question yes so then he thinks that oh this god business i got it down you know it's not that hard and then he goes to bed and uh he gets up in the morning and there's gunshots there's there's uh, smoke there's a sound of things being destroyed outside of his apartment window he goes down and there's people looting and rioting and going crazy and he says what's everyone so much upset about and the guy said i won the lottery but i only got 15 cents <laughs> <laughs> so is that bruce almighty <laughs> bruce almighty <laughs> bruce almighty yes yes exactly <laughs> so it, so it, it, it it's not as great a thing as you might think for us to become god <laughs> much more a curse than a blessing <laughs> much more a curse than a blessing yes exactly the happiness, a- happiness begins the first thing you have to do for happiness the first thing is resign from trying to be god <laughs> yes uh, uh, who said that Uh well in you are the author you are the author of this sentence uh if you have it I I think it was uh, Prahlad Maharaj said it in a roundabout way Yes great great sentence thank you Ishan and uh, Shyan look like they're bursting with a desire to say something There was an Indian movie that was something like that I think it's called like God you're great something along those lines but uh the like the way that one went is that like he is super unlucky and like everything he does fails and so you know he's like god why are you always just after me 
like if I was God, I'd do such a better job than you do because I'm such a great person, but I'm always like blessed with bad, or I always get bad luck. And then so God's like, okay, well, here you go. You're God now for one week. And so he, for like the first few days, he only just does things that make him happy. So the things where he was getting unlucky, now he gets lucky, right? So he gets a good job. He gets richer. He does better. And so, but then like the last few days comes and he's like, God comes to him and he's like, you've only done things for yourself. Why haven't you done things for like other people? And then so, you know, he's like, okay, I'll do things for other people. And then it, the story goes similar in which he says yes to everyone because everyone just keeps asking him such random things. He's like, okay, fine. I give everyone what they want because what, I got everything I wanted and I'm so happy. And then so, and then obviously like the, the things go bad and like the prisons get emptied and everyone's just on the streets and yeah. <laughs> Yeah. same point <laughs> anyone else has anything to add otherwise we'll go to govinda for a comment and a kirtan but but by all means if there's anything um that have i have i call have we called on everybody but because not only do we call on you but we also encourage you to just jump in as well uh, i'm sorry charitas prabhu can you give me the, the verse uh, for today's class? It was uh, the fourth verse in the second chapter, first canto of Bhagavatam. One, two, four. One, two, four. So uh, for the next class, it will be one, two, five? Correct. Thank yeah. you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. And if anybody wants to talk next week about Ram and Diwali, that will also be welcome as well. Govinda, you've been you've been laid back today, so maybe before you do the kirtan, you can wrap wrap everything up for us. See, now I have to warn you that so far our champion rapper is Onkar. He really wrapped wrapped things up really nicely last week. Okay. Well, first off. Uh... My uh, pleasure to be with everyone this morning, Hare Krishna. I uh, am in the middle of stake conference, so that's a church responsibility, and uh, that's why I, I put on the, the magic symbol indicating that I've left, but I am, I'm happy to be back. Um, I really was um, intrigued by that question, why can't we be God? And uh, I think it's a really good question, and I love Don Carr's answer. And I'm sure I'll make the, I'll bring down the transcendental mood. I don't think I'm you could bring it down more than I did already. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think, isn't what Krishna offers to us something that is just as good? Because what does Krishna want? He wants to have loving relationships with devotees who are totally surrendered and who want to serve him. And what are we taught about that? That if we can learn how to do that and to um, shorn ourselves of all so, uh, selfish motivations and uh, really in the mood of love and devotion, then we can aspire ultimately to have the same kind of relationship with Krishna and with one another, which is what Krishna wants for himself. And as, as I understand it, when you reach that transcendental level, there's no distinction. The gopis, uh, the cowherd boys, they don't see Krishna as, as being someone that is superior. He is, he's their friend. He's someone that they love, that they have the association of. And so, we may not actually get to be the guy, but we can have really, I think that's the promise of Krishna consciousness. You can have everything, everything that Krishna has, you can have, you can have the same um, mood of love and surrender and devotion and playfulness and uh, you know, everything that your heart desires. So, so what if I'm not God? If I have all that, what do I care? That's... I think the real takeaway is, is given by Omkar 
is that the position of a devotee is greater than the position of God. And the greatest evidence of that is in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna became curious to know what, what are my devotees experiencing? You know, what, what's it like to serve me? And being uh, uh, infatuated with the answer to that question, he came down and he assumed the role of a devotee in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then just, just look at his ecstasies. Um, you know, great scholars, scientists have studied the bodily transformations of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the throes of love of Godhead. And it's totally baffled them. They can't understand it. You know, sometimes his limbs would, well, maybe I shouldn't give the details because if there's someone listening for the first time, they'll say, wow, if that's going to happen to me, I'm not going to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> but uh, um, it, I think in this Chaitanya Charita, it also says the devotee experiences uh, pleasure more than the Lord, actually. The Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pleasure in serving Krishna was a greater pleasure than in Krishna being served. The simple analogy is, you know, sugar or you want to taste the sugar. So the devotee tastes the sugar of sweetness of Lord's qualities. And Krishna hankers to do the same. And even in his position as God, he's always serving, actually. Our, our understanding of wanting to be God, to be enjoying service is our materialistic mentality, right? But if you see the Lord's actions all the time, he's serving. It's our contaminated state that we desire to be the Lord so that everybody will come and serve me. And I think I'll be happy when people will serve me. But that assumption itself is wrong. You actually wow. derive happiness when you serve, not get served. Wow, that's a really good point, you know. So wanting to be God and having everyone bow down and do hosannas and hallelujahs to you and you to be the recipient, the end result, um, sound, it may sound like an ideal position, but if you um, know who God is from an objective point of view, he's always trying to outserve his servants. Krishna says, I don't have to work. There's no work for me, but I work in order to set example. In other words, God is the greatest servant. And also it's very popular last few years, Kapil in the corporate world will verify this. You know, the best type of leader are the servant leaders. Am I wrong? That's correct, Paul. That's correct. So God is by examples. So. so God is the, you know, if you if you were God. You you would you would simply be the greatest servant. That's all. Thank you, thank you for this passage. Uh, well, thank uh, you for amazing, that question. Amazing. That was a really good question. That certainly incited a lot of deep insights from Omkar and from Amrita Sundari, even from Ishan and Sian. Uh, uh, Charudas Prabhu, uh, uh, one last question, very short. Don't you think that uh, people in general do not accept the process of Krishna consciousness because uh, they want to be God? That is a strong reason why they do not accept or even other uh, religious paths, uh, other religious ways. So with my limited, limited understanding, I think it goes back to that simple example that Charu Prabhu gave on the mask it's more the ignorance and then misunderstanding your independence. I think that is one of the reasons that I think that mask example is a very basic example, but I think gives a lot of insight that sometimes you mistreat or misunderstand the independence given to you and then don't want to be confined or bounded by, by the regulations. You know, it's a common, Thank like you, a com it's a, you know, people always, they always uh, want to be blessed. They go to the church temple and they want to be blessed. They want to be blessed to have a big, healthy family. They want to be blessed to have a good income. They want to be blessed to have security. But um, it's a fact of life that every blessing comes with a burden. You know, you're in labor and you'd like to be in management. But in labor, you're working eight hours a day. In management, you're working 16 hours a day. 
So the thing is, be careful what you wish for, because if you wish for a higher blessing, it's going to come with a greater burden. So uh, like Kapil said, mostly ignorant people, they wish for the blessing, but they really don't want the blessing because with the blessing comes a burden. That guy who wanted to be in management, three months later, he's saying, oh man, this I don't like this. This is too much work, too much responsibility. I don't like this and like that and this and that and the other thing. That means he wasn't suited for management in the first place. He didn't have the requisite amount of maturity. So every blessing requires a burden. So even on, on one level, when you ask God for blessings, you have to be prepared to accept the burden. The burden, the extra responsibility is part of the blessing. But then in the ultimate issue, if you want to be God, that's the greatest burden of all because God, uh, he feeds every living being, he provides housing, he, he maintains all of his uh, numerous uh, children. There's no one who exercises the, the burden, the responsibility better than God. And you, you, you just, you, you just uh, shouldn't even wish for that. It's, it's just, it's potentially, uh, it's just ludicrous because you, you, know, you couldn't handle the burden and therefore you're not eligible for the blessing. But that Lord who maintains all living beings can become more than just your maintainer, more than just your father, when you bind him up with the ropes of devotional service like Mother Yashoda did during the month of Damodar. So why would you wanna be God? It's, it's not a good uh, pro proposition. It's not a good formula when in fact you could be a servant of God and bind him up with the ropes of your love. Well, wonderful answer. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody this Sunday morning for joining and for contributing in a major way. Kruti, Onkar, Amrita Sundari, Krishnam, Govinda Dev, Kapil, Ishan, Shan, Bijai, Sundari Priya. Who did we miss today? Thanks to Rasvidas Prabhuji. He was all morning here in the temple cooking and yeah. he just got back to the host home. Rasvidas, you'll be glad to know that your two puppets, Krishnam and Amrita Sundari, really, really contributed to the to the discussion today. But we know that just as you're standing there in the background, that you're in fact the puppet master of all that goes on <laughs> in Shri Gaur. Yeah, just yeah, looking, yeah, just yeah, looking yeah, at yeah, him. Yeah, he, reminds yeah, me, he reminds me of the picture of the universal form in the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> I was saying, behind every successful man, there is a woman. It's other way around here. Behind every successful woman, there is a man. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> and I was thinking of manager, right? Man is, right? When people are is, then they're manager. Man is, is a manager, right? <laughs> well, as long as your wife can laugh like that, you can get away with it. <laughs> I'm holding a tight for <laughs> You, I couldn't say that kind of things in my house, man. I'd be on my way to the hospital. But <laughs> well, Vinda Dave, do you want to do some kirtan? I would be honored to do that. I feel like I always learn so much in these uh, these Sunday morning classes. This has been so great. Hadi hadi bo. Hari Bol, my uh, obeisances to all the assembled devotees. I will try this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama.
Rama, 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 Hare, 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 Krishna, Hare, Krishna, 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 Hare, 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 Rama, Hare, Rama, 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 Hare, 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 Krishna, Hare, Krishna, 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 Hare, 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 Rama, Hare, Rama, 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 Hare, 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 Krishna, Hare, Krishna, 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 Hare, 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 Rama, Hare, Rama, 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 Hare, 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 Krishna, Hare, Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare, Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Hare, He He Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare 
Ankar, can you take one minute and wrap it up for us? Give us our takeaway, our yes. little take to go box here. Hare Krishna, all the devotees, please accept my obeisances. So, today we had a very wonderful discussion on the verse uh, 1.2.4, which is we, we sing this verse every single morning when we have our Bhagavatam classes. So, this important, this verse is kind of important. So, we started off with uh, Amrita Sundari Mataji is uh, giving this. Uh, uh, introduction of this verse and she told that uh, the offering obeisances to Narayana and goddess of Saraswati and Vyasadeva makes sense but why Narayana Rishi's name is included in the list so she gave the two reasons that one of uh, it is the story that when uh, uh, Lord Indra said send uh, Apsaras then Narayana Rishi made much more Apsaras and uh, so uh, offering obeisances to Narayana Rishi helps us to destroy lust in our hearts that is one of the reason and second uh, uh, reason is that Narayan Rishi are the presiding deities of the planet earth so offering the uh, obeisances to them is very necessary before starting anything then later we discussed uh, about uh, the purport of this verse uh, the, the 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 thing Shri Prabhupada mentioned that uh, people are struggling in this world and struggle for existence in this material world is perpetual uh, so, this, in Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Purana, which is specially meant for them who desire to get out of this material entanglement permanently. And then we'll discuss about uh, the difference between Purana and Vedas and how Purana is meant for different kinds of people uh, who, uh, who, are, who are in more of goodness, who are in more of uh, passion and more of ignorance and how different Purana is meant for different kinds of people. Then we had a, a good contribution from Vijay Krishna Prabhu. He, he asked two wonderful questions that uh, how can uh, this process uh, make, how can the rules and regulations make us free? And uh, how, can, uh, how can we follow the process which does not offer us to become a god? So then we had discussion onto it that rules and regulations are meant to make us free and not to make us bound. And uh, this process of Krishna consciousness offers us to become more greater than God and uh, not just to settle for easy settlement of being the God. So, and uh, uh, later we ha had uh, uh, Kirtan with uh, His Grace Govind, the Dev Prabhu, and we are now hoping for the next week's uh, verse to come up. Thank you very much. That was a very good summation. Just want to add that Kapil made a good contribution too about how to use, use your nature in Krishna's service. You don't have to try to um, go counterfeit to your nature. That was Can you forget to add on God, Prabhu, one, one sentence that towards the end of the call, Ras Vilas Prabhu came and he filled everybody's life with guffa and laughter. <laughs> <laughs> nice summary. Wonderful. And we'd like to thank uh, Anjali, Anjali, Anjali for joining us on Facebook, Greg Capitan, as well as Hemant Patel. And we're gonna have this on our Facebook page. If you wanna review the gems of wisdom that you um, uh, produce, as well as those that other members of the call contributed as well. And it'll be on our YouTube channel as well. So thank you again. It's just wonderful. 
churning the nectar with you all. Look forward to it. Every Sunday gets better. And uh, next week, next Saturday, everybody's invited to the temple with social distancing and mass to celebrate Diwali. Everybody, if you don't mind, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, 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 Ram,